And a 50 again to go! McRae, little one, liver, oh. liver, 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 liver. Hello, I'm Damien Barrett and welcome to Access All Areas. A remarkable day of football yesterday with thrilling finishes, comebacks and a few tears. Matthew Lloyd and Jimmy Bartell, welcome. Uh, welcome and thanks, Damo, and also Jimmy. But it looks like it's going to be another open season, Jimmy. Plenty of upsets in round one and two. Yeah, nailed it there, Damo. Comebacks. And what a comeback yesterday at the MCG. Mm. Nine goals from the Doggies in the last quarter, and they've started the season absolutely brilliantly. We'll start there. Uh, nine goals in the last quarter. The last eight of the game, it gave up uh, a 30-point deficit that the Hawks had 15 minutes into that final quarter. But there are a couple of big decisions which are going to be discussed as this week unfolds. Umpiring decisions, and this is the first of the two that we're talking about in this package. James Warple walking through the centre square, penalised, free kick dogs. Yeah, look, normally the umpires tell you to clear out. They have here, but I've never seen a free kick being paid for it, and it's such an important time of the game. He wanted, wanted James Warple to clear out, and this is the James Sicily one. Uh, the prohibitive contact is this new rule. It may be a new rule, but it wasn't. That wasn't no, the case for decision. it. Poor that decision, was a poor decision. decision. And, and surely the Warple one, you just quickly say, come on, James, get out. I know he might have warned him previously, mm. but too big a penalty. I just think in both those situations, I would say the umpire's got it wrong. Yep. Look, there's so much that, that Hawthorne mm. can be angered about, mm. and then they're not um, shedding any responsibility mm. for what happened. But it was a theme yesterday. You could argue that uh, Sicily should have yes. been a wake-up to what had happened prior to, to this moment, where Jarman Ippi on Billy Gowers here. Now, I think this is the right yes. thing to do to play yeah. a free kick against him here. So the reason they brought this rule in is to try and get rid of yeah. the, the tummy punches, the jumper punches, and things escalating, as we've seen in recent years. Try and penalise the team then and there. But to stop O'Meara on, on McRae here, that's again, that's a either. wrong decision yeah. again. Yeah, that's a poor one. So what is it? Is it force or is it just the action itself? So I don't think the force is strong enough there for O'Meara to be a free kick. As you said, the MP1 spot on. Great decision. Well, when you say what is it, is it force? It's a crackdown. And I don't care what anyone says. Mm. They, they, they could not be going down that path yesterday mm. when they let uh, Max Gorn be attacked last week mm. and do nothing about it effectively. But do you think they're being consistent enough? No. Right? No, so no that, I don't. a bit of a lottery. Do you, Lordy? I mean, no, I don't if so. you're going to pay that mm. free kick against Sicily, mm. you're going to pay 100 yes, free exactly kicks a game. Right. It feels like a new rule that they forgot about round one and mm. let's like stamp mm. it in the game for yep. round two. Yep. More importantly, from a, a Bulldogs perspective, that, those last eight goals of the game, I think that they're back to their manic 2016 style, aren't they? Yeah, they put the Hawks under a heap of pressure and they were able to force the quick kicks down the line and allowed that half-back line. Now, we spoke about last week, what is Bulldogs football? Mm. It's that manic pressure you speak about. Lots of numbers around the contest, contested footy, but that rebound off half-back, Caleb Daniel, Suckling, these sort of guys just got, got involved too much for the Hawks. Damo, I love that Clarko didn't make any excuses yeah. after the game. They got beaten by a team where they lost momentum. Uh, they lost Burgoyne, they lost Shield. The Dogs took over in the midfield and had a brilliant win. OK, Seb Collins, a, a journeyman in a footy sense. 11 games in a couple of years on the uh, Dockers mm. list and then yesterday, late in the piece, now as a Gold Coast yeah. Sun player, the big man who's dropped off his opponent there, Lord takes his towering Mark Lake. It's why he got recruited. Uh, he's an intercept marking king at BFL. He just dominated last year and I just love this. Yeah, he just left Tabernar at exactly the right time in a big moment and to be honest, I, I said during trade period this could be the worst list since Fitzroy and mm. they've now gone for within one point of St Kilda and now beaten Fremantle. So they've got heart and spirit and full credit to Stewie Jew. Crackdowns on certain rules, not on others. Should this have been a 50 metre penalty to, to Luke Ryan when he took the mark here on the, the wing area after this kick from Nat Five? You can see, and we'll slow it down, Jordan Murdoch runs into his space. We're told that's 50 metres normal. Yeah, that's the protected zone one and missed. And as you can see on the time clock, 40 seconds ago, Luke Ryan gets inside 50 and he's having a shot to win the game. Now, we don't know whether he kicks it, but mm. it gives him the opportunity to win the game for the Dockers. Brisbane Lions started beautifully. Waning Premiers was the opponent they defeated uh, in round one. North Melbourne yesterday, all on the back of, or largely on the back of, their big recruit, Lockie Neal. If Lockie Neal plays for Fremantle, they win that game uh, yesterday. So this, he's just a massive loss, and he's helping them win games, and tight games. So I thought Dane Beams would be the recruit of the year, but I think this guy will be, be it, because you just know what you get 
And this is the last quarter highlights alone. He, he's probably got six Brownlow votes already, Lockie Neal. Just phenomenal inside player. Rarely wasted possession, Jim. And you look at two of those centre clearances to another pickup from the Gold Coast Suns, uh, Jared Lyons, who's a good running yeah. mate for Lockie Neal. He only has to ride shotgun with him. Yeah. Uh, you also had Charlie Cameron, a recruit from two years yeah. ago. And Link McCarthy's kicked six goals yeah. in two weeks. Yeah. Another recruit from another club. So they've yeah. picked the eyes out of other clubs really well to go with those high draft picks. Adelaide Oval was, was jam-packed for the AFLW Grand Final. Adelaide versus versus Carlton, that there were sad scenes when Aaron Phillips, the, the face of AFLW in the three seasons it's been going, the, uh, the best on the field in the grand final, despite her being taken off the ground, Jimmy, as you yeah. can see, with three minutes remaining in the third quarter. 53,000 people, what a turnout, and well done to all the Adelaide people, but the Adelaide Crows women's team have been so dominant in the first three years. Aaron Phillips, look, is so far above everybody else, and as you said, a quarter and a half to go, and she was still the best woman on the ground by a mile. It's because she can play in the middle, goes forward, hits mm. the scoreboard. Again, multiple goals, you know, lots of possessions as well. But um, unfortunately, it might be the last we see of it. We hope not, but it could be. First season of AFLW, mm. won the best on ground in the grand final and the overall MVP of the competition. She's now done that again from a mm. grand final perspective, and the award on Tuesday night, both those awards are nameless. Mm. Surely she has to be yeah, at least given the honour of one yeah, of them being named well, after her. Yeah, that's probably the toughest decision. Do you have the best on ground for a grand final, the Aaron Phillips Ward, or you know, the Brownlow equivalent? Well, you won both. What would you rather have named after you if you had the oh, choice? Oh, I wouldn't be fussed if it was either. <laughs> Give us an answer, Jim. Uh, let's go to the grand final one because she's been so dominant on, on the grand final day. Yep. Ahead of this weekend's grand final rematch on Thursday, exclusive to afl.com.au, we're releasing some incredible inner sanctum access that we had with the two coaches on the day. And here's a small taste. Awesome opportunity, boys. Let's start well. Let's have a win. Let's go. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, hey, move on, move on. Boys, we're in a bit of strife here. Five minutes to go. Yeah, well, we don't, we don't concede another one. Get to every defender and tell them to possess the ball. There's nothing in this. The game's back on our turf. Let's go. Get take the game on and search forward. Let's go. We need an easy one. That's not singing the granny, is there? What are we standing up for? Your beauty. It might take to the last five minutes like last time. And just think about your role, your line, and your team. I've been fortunate enough to have a sneak preview of that, and that is going to be fantastic. It's must-see. Keep your eye out for it on Thursday. Another week of intense pressure and focus will fall on the Essendon Football Club. They were so disappointing again, Matty Lloyd. Yeah, it's round two, and I'm already sick of talking about the Bombers, to be honest, Dano, because it's the same thing. Uh, we teased this before round one. Uh, it's happened round one. And then round two, I said, I cannot wait for this first 10, 15 minutes from Essendon. There's a real lack of response, lack of care, uh, lack of confidence, and we'll go to that instant, uh, the interchange bench. Just to me, that is a lack of uh, real confidence, lack of connection, mm. lack of belief in themselves. Rushing off to the bench, they're just not in the game. Look at the score, 18 to two. St Kilda came out like a team who need to respond. I know we've all seen it now, but it is staggering to, to watch that back. And you can see Dylan Shields' reaction and, and, to it, to, to, to Langford there. And he did the right thing, but what I'll also say is there's been a lot, and this is another one, Francis, again, this is a lack of connection across the board. And there's been a lot of players having a go at each other on the interchange bench as well. So to me, they are not a connected, united yeah. group at the moment, which is leading to results. How does that happen when you're two games in? And, and you, you're right, yeah. you hinted at this. Yeah. Others got a feel for it, that yeah. things weren't right going into round one. Well, I, I, Damien, I think I do look at this group at the top and in terms of the players, and there's no real strong influence among them. If Luke Hodge could be traded into one team, I'd love to send him down to Tullamarine because he's the player they are crying out for, someone to take direction, be the traffic cop. There's not one player on that team. Mm. And I bagged Brendan Goddard a number of yep. times, but I would even take Brendan back right now tomorrow because they are lacking someone to drive them and push them, Jimmy. It's really frustrating. The, the round one performance was, was really ordinary and it was arguably worse on the weekend. Mm. You've gone behind the scenes and had yeah. a look at what they did with their mistakes. Yeah, I think that the first starting point is effort and the effort just hasn't been there uh, in regards to... And as I said, this one, I wanted Hurley to charge straight through him. Make a statement. You're 37-10. Not hit him in the head. 
but bowl him over and say, come on, boys, come with me, get on my back. He didn't do that. And as a response there, Guelph, he just loses Dean Kent far too easy. He ought to be harder than that. He wasn't. They go another goal down. Heads drop. Fantasia, put your knee straight through Blake Akers here. He had to do it. Make a statement. Soft effort, just not good enough. So this is what's happening. Is John Worsfold being hard enough? Dylan Shield, big money, come to the club. Do you just want to be an outside player? Or will you go and make a contest here? He didn't want to do it. Then, if I'm on Zaharakis, deep in defence, I would love that at the moment. Because these efforts aren't strong enough. So, players right across the board. Connor McKenna, you're a good running player. But do you want to defend when your time comes against the best man on the ground, uh, Jade Gresham? This is a poor effort. So, you know, it all is between the ears for mine. They've got the talent. But their effort and ability just doesn't stack up to that. that that's abysmal yeah, watching for is. those players who are going to be forced mm. to go through that tape. Jimmy, their opponent on Friday night is the Melbourne Footy Club, who also started 0 and 2 on the year. Arguably, their problems aren't as pronounced, but you had a good look at them on Saturday night against Geelong when they were smashed. Yeah, the, the numbers came back and they had uh, over 70 inside 50s, but they ma barely kicked a score and it was the connection from mids to forwards. Now, Jesse Hogan leaving is not the, the sole reason. They were caught out of position and for me the worrying sign is, and you hear reports out of Melbourne that they're underdone, but they got exposed for being underdone because once they moved the ball out of their back line they couldn't restructure, they couldn't uh, I guess get the second effort. Now their contested ball numbers were fantastic, which shows that you can you can do the first effort. But it's this follow-up second effort. There's three cats inside the goal square there who just transition a bit harder. Tom Hawkins, this one here, Jordan Clark, first game, thought his way through perfectly. But look at the cats. It's even Harry Taylor from full backs and half back. Well, gee, he's almost there, the first to congratulate Jordan There's Clark. 35 metres without a Melbourne player, isn't mm. that? It's a great scene, this. Yeah, Paul was giving that ball First man to celebrate. Harry Taylor is playing down the other end of the ground. So, look, the transition for them was, was poor. And, look, you can be underdone, but you've just got to will yourself and get yourself to the next contest. You can be underdone, but they're also disconnected, mm. aren't they? Similar to what Lordy highlighted with Essendon. You yeah. go to some incidents here. We're going to highlight a couple of players yeah. here. This is uh, on the right, Hunt, and in the middle on that uh, circular is Hunt. Arms. Now, they're not where they're meant to be, yeah. Jimmy. I, I know there's confusion around this 6-6-6 arrangements after a goal, but... You can't get this wrong. And if you no. do, you need to rectify it again, later, again in the first quarter. That's Hunt again who we've highlighted there. He shouldn't be in that space because there's a man already on that wing. He realises it's too late. Yeah. He's trying to get out of the zone, but it's too late. Now, Pies gave him a chance probably the first time, not the second time. And then even later on again, Viney comes on off the interchange bench. Again, there's confusion, but he's not a wake-up to what he's meant to be doing right now. Yeah, so what's happened a lot now, we see interchanges uh, these days, they just spin them, but it's the communication. So they've got a, all of those was a player coming on for a player not in their position, and someone's gone, well, I'm going into the midfield. So it might be a half-back coming on the ground going, well, hang on, we've already got six defenders, where do I go? Mm. Or I go to the wing, hang on, there's already someone there. So the communication from the interchange with the player coming on hasn't been at its best. Hard-fought win by the Cats in round one against Collingwood and, and, and a dominating win against the Demons. Are they better than we thought? Are they going to be up there? I think people always like to write the Cats off, like the Swans and the Hawks every year. But the thing is, they're actually trusting those younger players in key roles now, which makes the likes of Dangerfield, Selwood, Ablett even fresher when they come through the middle. So if you trust Constable, Kelly, Menegola, even Atkins and Delhouse to play in the middle, well then at the 5-10 minute mark, you can plug Joel Selwood back mm. into a centre mm. bounce. And imagine him coming at you with it full of energy because he's had a bit of time out on the wing. Now, if you could play Selwood at full back, you'll still have 25 possessions. You play him on the wing, the young players get going, you inject him into the centre bounce, and now everyone's getting involved. Yeah. The roles seem clear at Geelong. Everyone's playing them. They're, they're, you, they're, we're talking about being united. That's mm. exactly that. Harms, who does he tag? He goes to Kelly. Dangerfield dominates after half time. He goes to Dangerfield. Kelly dominates. So they've got great depth at the moment. The Eagles, uh, mm. impressive pre match, uh, <laughs> unfurling their premiership flag of last year. I, I can't recall seeing uh, seeds <laughs> yeah. as good as these pre game. Oh, it's just getting better. I think the AFL, and I know there's been a lot of criticism that we don't have pre match uh, curtain raise and all this sort of thing, but this was outstanding from the West Coast Eagles. They've been a brilliant club for a long, long time, the West Coast. And uh, yeah. Enjoy it. It's, uh, they're so hard to win premierships and mm. uh, there's just great scenes on the weekend. Does this remind you of someone? Jack Petricelli mm. swooped on the ball on the uh, outer wing there for the Eagles in this game. Now, he wasn't part of the flag winning 22, but 
With form like this and being a high recruit, you've got to know you like him and rate him. Yeah, he's got some serious wheels, doesn't he? That was Zach Williams who did the first uh, initial chase, and he's very quick, but he's perfect for today's mm. game. A real line breaker, because if you've got someone with a bit of speed coming from the wing off half back, you can really break down those defensive zones. You, you become, I guess, you know, the 70, 80 metre player. You can run at 20, kick at 50, but. He he's, can use the ball beautifully well, as we can see on the run. And speaking of breaking down defensive zones, it's exactly what Collingwood did against the uh, Alex Rance-less Richmond on Thursday night. Yeah, over 170 marks, most of them uncontested. And what they did was, because of the Alex Rance factor, you felt like Richmond went into the game trying to protect their defence a lot. But their front line of their defence started sagging back too far. And Lloyd Collingwood just took what was in front of them. So if they saw the free man, they were happy to knock it around with patience. I think that led to the Richmond you know, factor of only having 30 tackles. They just couldn't get in the game to tackle. Yeah, that's right, Jim. And I don't think Collingwood planned to go you know, this heavy with the contested, bo- uh, sorry, the uncontested marks. But if guys like Matt Weller uh, and also you know, Butler and Castagna and Higgins and the front line don't want to pressure, well, you'll give the Collingwood this. And... This was Collingwood's weakness over the first JLT in round one. They couldn't get the ball out of defence. Uh, they were turning it over left, right and centre, but Richmond didn't put that pressure on. So and just backing up that point, like, yeah. did you see this as a horses for courses against Richmond or is this their new style? Uh, horses for courses against yeah. Richmond, yeah. Okay. It's uh, time now for the now weekly offering on access areas of the Big Ask. And this one goes to both of you. Ooh. Is the outrage over Eddie Maguire's comments over the top? Oh, I think there's just a number of factors at play here. You know, the previous gaffes from Eddie in, in the past, there's a bit of Sydney factor at play here. You know, Eddie's versus the Swans has been going on for a long time. And then also the question... Move along, Jimmy. That's well, a big ass quickly. <laughs> no, well, why would you have a crack at someone flipping the coin? Yep. It was fair enough, but let's move on. Yeah, yep. Yep. To both also, the last six times Sydney has started the season at 0-2, they've still made the finals. Will 2019 be different? Yes, they won't make it. They won't make it. No. Uh, Bailey Williams was rested yesterday for the Dogs. It's round two. It's round two. Are the Bulldogs having a lend of us with that? The Jesus, yes. JLT can be tough to get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playing shorter quarters. Uh, yeah, I think they might have a lend of us. Lordy, Christian Petrarca, does he need a spell? Uh, no, no, he's too good a player to play VFL, but he does need a rocket. Uh, but he's only probably a week or two away from playing VFL, but too early on that one yet. Jimmy, did we jump the gun on the Dockers? Did we jump the gun? Yeah, we, oh. went, we talked them up last week. Mm. Oh, well, they were impressive last week, but I, I think it's still wait and see with the Dockers. Mason Woodlordy, is he at the crossroads now that he's been dropped in round two? Uh, and it's not the first time he's been dropped. Uh, he was dropped previous years too, but I'd be another club looking at Mason Wood to get the best out of him because I think he's got a lot of ability. And Jimmy, I'll throw this one to you. Will we see James Hurd as a senior coach again? Whoa, 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 just pump the brakes. <laughs> he's just gone back in the media. Just let's settle down. Yep. I agree. There's a fantastic new Telstra Live Pass commercial which is now doing the rounds and it's got some great cameos by some of the game's best stars. And if you haven't seen it, here's a small taste. Play on, mate. Number four. Can I get six of those sausages, thanks? Yes, mate. I'll throw an extra one in there for you, champ. 48 metres, goes himself! Oh, that the footy? Yeah. You with Telstra? Yep. Hey, back to work. All right, the acting out of the scene there for those guys oh, in that commercial. Brody Green yeah. is getting a logo on there. He was <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> hey, Lloydie, yeah, this used to be your domain. Yeah, Jimmy's right. taken it over yeah. in recent times, but you've reclaimed it. You've gone behind the scenes to try and find us a couple of funnies uh, to close. He's an experienced campaigner, Ramper. He's gone the bank push, and then the old chestnut. Oh, sorry, sorry, didn't mean that. But uh, Eddie Betts, how good he's just a little smile there, but... Uh, yeah, love that little bit of vision from a wiry <laughs> defender, a wily defender. And Jimmy, you're not happy about Lordy no. Young behind the scenes, but uh, I think he's got you covered at this stage. You, <laughs> you reckon? Well, what about what I've brought to the table? What have you brought to the table? Oh, well, Angus Brayshaw. We're accommodating mob down there at Geelong. Look, you want a, you want a chippy? No, nah, no, nah, I'm good, <laughs> thanks, mate. Uh, maybe a bit later. We look after the opposition. I actually do think he says later there. And he has yeah, had man. some skin fold issues, uh, <laughs> yeah. Brayshaw, so the cat supporter getting in his yeah. head. Um, thanks, boys, no, thanks, and thank you for joining us on Access All Areas. Have a good week. We'll catch you next Monday. Goodbye.